I'm not 100% sure how many cruises I've been on, but it's greater than 30 and less than 40. I am like um, just under 10, I think, like somewhere between seven and 10. We're not doing the math today, but we have one cruise that we did with a toddler and there was a bunch of questions on Instagram. So we're gonna go over those today. Well, one with my toddler. Technically I've been on a cruise, with Stacy when she was a toddler. Stacy's my younger <laughs> sister. But a lot of people ask questions about cruising, so let's jump right in. The question that got asked the most, well, there's two. One was sleeping arrangements. How did we sleep, Letty? Can you fit that many people in a room, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Letty slept in a pack and play that we brought, and we used a slumber pod, which is essentially a blackout pod that Ten, goes on top. Yeah. Slumber pod was definitely worth it. Took her a little bit of getting used to to sleep in it. The first night, we, we slept her in that. She kind of fussed about it being just pitch black in there. So we left the zipper that kind of you pass the child in and out of. We left it open until she fell asleep and then zipped it up. And that worked out really well. I had heard that the bassinet or like pack and play crib thing that they give you on a cruise is pretty small. So fitting a toddler into it is just, it doesn't work very well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Bringing the pack and play on was pretty simple. Yeah, we just brought it on with our stuff. So very, very easy to do, but we did not bring a monitor. We, if Letty was sleeping, one of us or Aubrey's parents were in the room. I'm sure that there's something you could probably get away with with your child sleeping in the room. We just weren't comfortable with that. The second most asked question was potty training, swim diapers, that kind of situation. Which I wasn't aware. I thought it was like, oh, you can put a swim diaper on your toddler and they can go like in any area of the splash child's area, but that's not the case on every ship and every cruise line. So just check before you go. For, for Royal, the splash pad area, they allowed her to have a diaper. Mainly it was supposed to be like one little toddler section that had a little kid slide in it, but they really let her go anywhere in the splash pad. She just wasn't supposed to be in the hot tub or pool. She wasn't allowed in the adult pool areas that were like further on. But when we went to the island, Royal Caribbean's island, she was allowed in any pool, didn't matter with a swim diaper on. So I heard it was the difference between the regulations since it, the cruise ship when it's not, when it's out to sea, is still regulated by the FDA or CDC or something. So that's what the swim diaper rule came in. But then on their own island, they were allowed to do whatever they wanted to do. So that's why the swim diaper rule was like, yeah, as long as your kid was in a swim diaper, they can go anywhere. A lot of you asked where I got Letty's swimsuits and my swimsuits. Most of hers are from Target. Mine are from Target and Amazon, whether they're three years old or new. Some people asked, how did you handle all of that luggage or everything that you brought with you? I tried to stay as minimal as possible. Letty's to the age where she is pretty well entertained with like just going to do activities. Uh, just depends on your child and their age, but I, I didn't want a lot of baby gear. So we brought the pack and play. That didn't fit in a suitcase, um, but it was pretty much the only thing that didn't fit. We put the slumber pod box in the suitcase and then her stuff took up, took up about um, one and a half suitcases. And Not then, one and a half suitcases, a half like, of a size. Sorry, yes, so one half, up, yeah. It took up like three fourths of one <laughs> yeah, suitcase. My bad. Yeah. We brought two suitcases total. Yeah, we brought two of. big ones. And I what happens is I usually get half a suitcase and maybe a, like a little bit if I need to go over. And then Aubrey will get a like half, a and half then and then the other three quarter, quarter side. or something <laughs> over on the other. So, and then Letty gets the rest. The truth is whatever you bring, try to put it all in backpacks in in like rolling suitcases, like whatever. It's going to be a lot easier to no. put everything in the biggest suitcase you can. Then when the suitcases are empty, you can slide them underneath the bed. So that definitely frees up some space. We did bring a travel stroller. So I, and we used it. So I would say stroller. What's it called? Cause someone asked Ours that. is a baby jogger city, city mini. The smaller your stroller can be, if you can like, it was in a bag okay. so you can kind of just like wear it. Definitely bring toiletries like sunscreen and baby soap. Um, just because buying those things on a cruise ship or like on an island is pretty expensive. Someone else asked about Disney versus cruising. The reason we don't haven't done a Disney cruise line yet is it's just, it's a lot more expensive. I don't know exactly, but it's anywhere from two to three times more expensive. So in my opinion, I would rather drive down to Orlando, spend two days at Disney, then go on a cruise, then go spend five days on a Disney cruise. And it would be cheaper to do two days at Disney and then a five day cruise rather than a five day Disney cruise, just for us and where we are. It's I think appropriate for like certain ages. 
where they might be able to remember it a little bit better. I don't know. Yeah, or really get involved with some of the stuff. Like Letty would like like the characters, but I don't think that she would be able to get involved in like the magical experience of a Disney cruise as much. You know, believe it or not, Disney's not that expensive for us because we live in Florida. We have the season passes that allow you to go Monday through Friday. It was only like 400 or $450 each for our thing. So 900 bucks for our like year long passes. So Disney isn't that expensive for us just to travel down. Uh, for whereas the Disney cruise, this cruise we went on Royal Caribbean was like 1200 bucks. The Disney equivalent I think was like 3000. So obviously much more expensive. We love Royal Caribbean cruises, but we have been on Carnival, had a good time. We've been on Norwegian, had a good time. Um, but as far as like bringing your family on, we for sure can confidently say Royal's a good choice for family. Um, they have really great childcare facilities for any age. The next question was kind of like what we did with Letty during nap time. Letty is very easy to nap. It's actually surprising how easy it is to nap. Yeah, it's like hard maybe to like get her away from the pool or the fun thing, but like once you do that, ready to go down yeah. for a nap. So kind of our flow, if you will, would be that, you know, we would get room service brought, which was like pastries, fruits. Oh, in the morning. Yeah, yeah. and coffee, stuff like that. And then we would immediately go out to the pool and Letty would start playing and swimming. We would have like lunch out there at the pool. And then, then Aubrey's parents would usually like take over for us and take Letty back to the room to nap so that we could go to the gym, hang out with our, the friends that had come on the cruise with us, kind of just do whatever we wanted to do. And then when Letty woke up from the nap, we would then meet up with them and either go to the pool again or stay somewhere inside. Yeah, do like the, the arcade, walk around the promenade. There's plenty to do, really. There is an indoor air conditioned uh, play space for pretty much all ages can go in there, but they stock it with different toys every day for babies and toddlers. There's like, it's very, very clean. There's coloring stations. There's um, an attendant there the entire time. Um, so that is a good option. I would say if we didn't have my parents there, we would be fine. So that's just something for you to know. Like it was, we would have been fine. Um, you can leave your child in the childcare facility. I'll for, talk about yeah, that. Yeah, for nap time. Yeah. Or, yeah. For nap time if you needed to. Yeah. But after we would do something indoor, we would go to our early dinner. Yeah, which we was, had the early dinner at 530, which was nice because that's you know, close to the time we would normally eat. We have YouTube Premium, so you can download YouTube videos onto your phone, so that way she could watch Disney or Diana or on the phone while we were at dinner. The dinners um, get a little bit long, so that's why we kind of chose to do that, but I know a lot of families would just go to the buffet and like have a really fast dinner, so it just depends on what you guys want to do as a family, but we like the sit-down dining experience. And then after that, we would usually go to a show or do something like at, right after dinner, and then Letty would get pizza. She loved pizza yeah. at night, so we'd usually get like some pizza or some kind of dessert, and then we'd go back to the room and we'd put her down. And then Aubrey and I would spend time doing social media stuff or just chatting, watching TV. Go to bed early. <laughs> go to bed early. That's kind of like what our, our routine was. As far as age um, going on a cruise, Letty is, like Brad says, maybe the youngest that we would ever bring. Although I see plenty of families all the time going with the younger babies. I would say the hardest stage is gonna be like crawling into just starting to walk. They just get busy. You can't cr crawl a baby everywhere. I would also consider uh, what type of child you have. Letty is like, she knows boundaries. We feel like she listens very well. She's not a runner. And so if you have a child that's very, very busy and in, when they get into open spaces, there's not a lot of like, safety awareness <laughs> we all know those kids that like literally it seems like run. the moment <laughs> that the mom lets go of them or dad lets go of them or or someone turns they're just like track star like they're literally like whoa watch how far i can get away from my parents the crews may give you a little bit of anxiety with that i know that somebody else asked too like what to do if your child likes routine on a cruise i would just pick the really key points that are good for your child ours is a really good solid nap uh, three square meals a day and a good bedtime. We were pretty flexible with bedtime, like maybe an hour in there, but like, you know, as an adult, you don't feel well when you eat junk and you're tired and you've been out in the sun. Really let your child lead. Don't like just force them into activities just because you want them to do them. Like I, you may really want to see a show, but 10 minutes in your kid is like not having it. You, you may just have to go, you if know? If one fun thing happens per day, I think you did a good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's difficult with kids. And I, I don't want it to sound like it's like cruising's not fun with kids. 
It's just everything comes with different hurdles, but it also brings like different highs. Like it's so much fun watching Letty eat ice cream cone. The highs are different. There's different lows. There's just different obstacles to that you have to navigate when you're when you have a kid. Getting off the ship, people ask, do you need a passport? So cruises are considered closed loop itineraries essentially. Like you're leaving and coming back to the same port, like you're not getting off and staying for more than 24 hours. You need a certified birth certificate, but you can also bring a passport. We have our passport. We just brought Letty's birth certificate. The difficulty comes from getting off the ship, like into returning into the US. If you have a passport, it's a breeze. If you have a birth certificate, you have to wait in a much longer line because there's only one line and you have to show your birth certificate, but you do not need a passport to go onto a cruise. You can just use a birth certificate. I guess at least for the cruise I'm talking about. There may be other cruises that you can't, but closed looped, like out of, out of the US, back to the US, you can use a birth certificate. Reminder that most cruise rooms have just a shower and it's pretty small but we just put Letty in there, showered her off, soaked her off, and it was just a really like quick thing. Maybe that would be something to practice at home if your child is not used to showering. If you had a baby, I would say you would probably just have to hold on to them. I would find like an inflatable. I bet you they oh, make yeah. inflatable, an inflatable, bathtub. inflatable baths. I would look into inflatable bathtubs if you have a baby or a kid that just absolutely wouldn't do a bath any other way because the shower, you could, it has like a head that detaches, so you could fill up mm -hmm. a bathtub and then you could just dump it into the shower to drain. So yeah, that'd be a good idea. that would be an option if you had a kid that was like, I ain't showering, so. Definitely think about bringing all of the toiletries that you need, like sunscreen and like baby soap. I know I was hesitant to like bring baby soap. It's just expensive if you're buying it on the ship or somewhere off the yeah, ship. Yeah, bring extra diapers. Any seasickness issues? Luckily, I don't feel like Letty got any seasickness. I was kind of concerned about that, but. Aubrey didn't either, which is surprising because I think she's more prone to seasickness. I'm good to go got those navy sea legs, you know? It's more on the rare side for someone to have seasickness issues. Regarding childcare on the ship, for Letty's age, it would have been, I think, like $7 an hour, and the max that you can leave a child her age is about three hours. Um, I think that changes when they turn three on Royal, and then after age three, I think it's free. Yeah, free. For them to go to childcare, and you can literally leave them like a good chunk of time. Um, but for babies, again, I think it costs per hour and there's a limit on how many hours per day you can leave them. I, we checked out the childcare facilities. They are so clean. The people were nice. Mm -hmm. People seem great. There's plenty of like toys and everything is again, very clean, but just look into whatever cruise ship you're going on to see what the cost is, how long you can leave them. Someone else asked how many people could you fit in that room? I think that, you know, us and Letty is comfortable. It wasn't like cramped. I think you could have fit another child in the room. It would have just been more difficult, especially if they needed like a bassinet. If they were just like a regular, like sleep on a bed kid, I think it would have been fine. We have friends that they slept in an interior room, so no balcony space either. And they had bunks that flipped out of the side of the walls and then they slept in the middle on the bed. So, and they were perfectly fine yeah. and happy. So. And I mean, growing up, when I went on cruises with my family, like we would have four in a room and it's fine. I mean, it's tight when you're like getting ready for dinner. I mean, that's about the only time that you're like, oh my gosh, this is really cramped. But other than that, you don't, spend a, that, lot of time in your you don't room. spend a lot of time in your room. You know, I, I think balcony rooms are nice for Aubrey and I because we do like to like drink coffee out there, see the weather roll in, you know, and kind of get that. But in my opinion, if you're not going to have a balcony room, and it's just in my opinion, Stay in the interior room because a porthole window ain't gonna do much for you and it costs more money. I feel like we covered most of the questions that we got asked, but comment down below if you have any other questions for us and we'll try to answer them. We're also looking at a cruise in like late August, early September. So if we can't address it via the comments, maybe we'll try to film that specific question to give you guys a better understanding of like the cruise ship. Aubrey and I just love cruises. They're really cost effective ways to travel and you know, kind of relax. Um, subscribe if you haven't, share this video with someone that's going to be cruising with a toddler or, or any of your friends just because you want to support us. You're worth it.